Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order when you check out Row One Brand's Vintage Sports Pictorium Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. If he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 Vintage NFL Helmet Poster. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Today, we're going to discuss the career of weightlifter Lee James. If you're not a fan of Olympic weightlifting or a lifter yourself, you're probably asking who Lee James is. It's not surprising that one would ask that question because Olympic weightlifting has never been a popular sport in America. Most USA lifters get very little recognition and they don't receive compensation for the countless hours they devote to the sport. Such was the case with Lee James who won the silver medal at the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal. No American male lifter has won an Olympic medal since, except for Mario Martinez, who won a silver, and Guy Carlton, who won a bronze. They both medaled at the 1984 Games in Los Angeles. Not to diminish their accomplishment, but Soviet bloc countries boycotted the 1984 games. I first met Lee in 1985 at a weightlifting clinic in York, Pennsylvania. Humble then as he is now, he's a modest man with a strong faith in God, who speaks little of his achievements. Because of his modesty, I was afraid he might say no when I asked if I could write an article about him and his accomplishments. Thankfully, he graciously granted my request. Born on October 31st, 1953, Lee remembers watching all the movies about Samson as a child and reading about Samson's mighty strength in the Old Testament. He hoped one day that he could be as big and as powerful as Samson. Lee started weight training in 1969 at the age of 15. His source of inspiration was his lack of size. When he tried out for football at Westover High in Georgia, the coach told him he was so small that the team didn't have a uniform that would fit him. When Lee told his parents that he wanted to start weight training to gain weight and muscle, they purchased him a Bruce Randall 110-pound weight set for Christmas. Randall was former Mr. Universe. Later on, Lee started weight training at the YMCA in Albany, Georgia. Albany is where his family settled when Lee was eight years old. It was his third stop. First, he lived in Gulfport, Mississippi, his birthplace, Later on, his family moved to Mobile, Alabama, and finally Gainesville, Georgia. With no one to coach him, he learned proper techniques from reading and studying photos in weightlifting magazines. He had plenty of great lifters to emulate, too. Tommy Kono, a gold medalist at the 1952 and 1956 Olympics, and Norm Shemansky, gold medalist at the 1952 Olympics were the two he emulated most. He entered his first competition in December 1970 and managed to clean and jerk 255 pounds. At the Teenage Nationals in Georgia six months later, Lee clean and jerked 295 pounds. He weighed only 173 pounds. Along the way, Lee mastered the technique of the lifts. In Olympic weightlifting, the objective is to lift the weight from the floor to the overhead position. 
the snatch is completed in one motion. The other two lifts, the clean and jerk and the clean and press, are completed in two movements. Because he experienced lower back discomfort, Lee was relieved when the International Weightlifting Federation eliminated the press from competition shortly after the 1972 Olympics. Lee continued making tremendous progress for someone who had no prior experience with weightlifting. He didn't have a coach either. He attributes his progress to the fact that he comes from an athletic family. His father, Lee Sr., played football, baseball, and boxed in high school. His sister was an outstanding softball and tennis player. His brother was a good enough baseball player to be drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers. Lee's lifting career was put on hold in 1972 when he joined the Army's 101st Airborne Division. He wasn't able to do any weight training during basic training, but once basics were over, he worked out at a gym in Port Campbell, Kentucky. It wasn't an ideal place to train, though. The barbells were bent, and climate control was non-existent. No heat in the winter, no air conditioning in the summer. But it was better than nothing, so Lee made the best of it. He purchased squat stands and a sheet of plywood to use as his lifting platform. A friend, Carl Dougherty, lent him an Olympic barbell to use. At that point, Lee was considering going to ranger school. Instead, he accepted the Army's offer to work temporary duty at the gym. Lee was finally able to compete again in October of 1973, and he picked up right where he left off, lifting 330 pounds in the clean and jerk. At another competition in January of 1974, he lifted 132.5 kilograms in the snatch, 292 pounds, and 165.5 kilograms in the clean and jerk. That's 358 pounds. Those lifts qualified him to compete in the junior and senior nationals in the 82 and a half kilo weight class. That's roughly 182 pounds. He took second in the juniors and fourth in the seniors. Those performances qualified him to lift in international competitions. And he did not compete in Germany, France, Spain, and England. His best snatch was 140 kilograms, 308 and a half pounds, and his best clean and jerk was 170 kilograms, roughly 375 pounds. It was at that point that Lee realized he might have what it takes to become an Olympian. His goal was to make the 1976 Olympic weightlifting team. Although still without a full-time coach, Lee received helpful advice from Dick Green and Marty Seifer. Soon after returning from his European trip, Lee was off to Mexico to compete in the Pan American Games. Lee placed second with a 135 kilogram, 297 and a half pound snatch and a 165 kilogram, 363.7 pound clean and jerk. Next up was the World Championships in Manila, Philippines. He placed a respectable eighth, which wasn't bad considering this was Lee's first opportunity to compete in the World Championships. Later, in a local competition in Georgia in December, Lee snatched 315 pounds, which was the most he had done up to that point. One month later, in Philadelphia, he lifted his all-time best in the clean and jerk, 380 pounds. A month later, in Iowa, he set yet another personal record with a 695-pound total. That's both lifts combined. Then came the Senior Nationals in California in June of 1975. Lee snatched 142 and a half kilograms, 
314 pounds and clean and jerk 170 kilograms, roughly 375 pounds, the same as Pete Rawlock, his main competitor, had performed. But Lee had to settle for second place. The reason? The tiebreaker goes to the man that weighed in with a lighter body weight, and Rawlock was slightly lighter than Lee. Later that year, he once again competed in the Pan American Games and took first place with a 140 kilogram, 308 and a half pound snatch and a 175 kilogram, 386 pound clean and jerk. All the heavy training resulted in Lee gaining size and muscle, which meant he would move up to the next weight class, 90 kilograms, 198 and a half pounds. His first two competitions in that new weight class were Europe versus the Americas. The first competition took place in Toronto, and the second was in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, both taking place in November of 1975. His lifts were now up to 150 kilograms, 330 and a half pounds in the snatch, and 185 kilograms, 400 and eight pounds in the clean and jerk. Around that time, Lee and his family moved to York, Pennsylvania, a move made possible with help from weightlifting official Bob Christ. Christ wrote letters to the Army and the Pentagon on Lee's behalf, urging the Army to reassign Lee to York. There, Lee would be able to work out with many other top USA lifters. There was more to the move, too. Lee now had a coach in Dick Smith, and he enrolled at York College, where he studied marketing. In February, Lee began his attack on the American record in the snatch, in the 90 kilo weight class, with a lift of 157 and a half kilos, roughly 347.2 pounds. The late Rick Holbrook had held the record previously with 155 kilograms. In June, at the 1976 Senior Nationals in Philadelphia, Lee took first place, beating out his good friend Phil Grappaldi with a 160 kilogram, 352.7 pound snatch and a 195 kilogram, 430 pound clean and jerk. The 160 kilogram snatch broke the American record of 157 and a half that Lee had set back in February. The 1976 Nationals also served as a qualifier for the Olympics, and both Lee and Grappaldi made the team. The Olympics are next in part two. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.